We're doing some Detroit Lions news today and some things to talk about here when it comes to the Lions. We're going to talk about Jamison Williams. Is the media trashing on this guy a little bit too much? Where does Dan Campbell rank per 33rd team, a rising YouTube channel? I think we all like it. We're going to talk about what is the world saying about DeAndre Hopkins because it never ends. And look, we're in the lull period right now after, tr- after the NFL draft before training camp. If you've been following me for the past four years, you know it's a little bit difficult to come up with things and ideas during this time, but we're going to try to do it until train camp hits, and then it's non-stop ending. But before we get into today's video, if you're a Lions fan and not subscribed, I don't really get it because I talk all things Detroit Lions news and rumors, so hit that subscribe button right now, hit that like button, and we're going to have a fun time doing so. Let's go. Shout out to uh, Pride of Detroit and All Lions Fan Nation doing these articles here. You can check them out. Jeremy Reisman, everybody knows these guys. Pumping content out for us content creators to at least to talk about on YouTube during this difficult time. But another article came out about Jameson Williams dismissing criticism about his social media site here. And it's talking about, you know, his Instagram and Twitter. People don't get it the wrong way. And he was, to, you know, obviously, remember that tweet? that he made a couple months ago about Lamar Jackson. He says, it was no shots at Jared Goff. I love Goff. You know, we out here, we got a perfect relationship. It's just like the tweet. Nothing went down a relationship. We still have a tight relationship. Nothing really happened. Social media, Twitter. I think the media is crapping on JMO way too much. I think they're nitpicking here. I said that last time when he made the tweet out here. Folks, he is a young guy on social media. This is what they do. I think we need to relax on social media. It's, this guy is everything's getting picked apart about this guy. Look, I know he's made mistakes, injuries, this, that, and the other, and he wasn't getting a lot of attention last year. But folks, we got to chill a little bit. We can't just pick everything this do, this guy does apart and and make it negative. He he is a young guy. Just remember us when we were all young guys. We did the same thing. And I think we need to relax a little bit on Jamison Williams. Let's just worry more about the production on the field than anything else. I don't think he's got character concerns. I think he's just a young, immature guy, just like we all were young and immature at that age. I was absolutely immature when I was 20, 21. So it's nothing new. That's part of life. But let me know in the comment section, do you think the media is crapping on him too much? Why for yes and and for no? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I do. And here we go. We're talking about DeAndre Hopkins again here. And this is talking about should the Lions go ahead and add this guy to the roster. Man, it first was trade, then he was released. Should the Lions add him? What everybody's saying about getting him. Why? Because he had to release Quintus Cephas and Stanley Berryhill due to the gambling and Jamison Williams suspended six games. First off, Quintus Cephas wasn't going to make the roster. Let's get that. Perfectly queer, clear. Barry, Barry Hill was not going to make the roster. Okay, so it doesn't matter right there at all. Those two guys were not making the roster. You're going to have six wide receivers. Those guys just weren't going to do it. So it doesn't matter that they were released. So the, these guys, they, Stanley Barry Hill didn't play last year. You only know who, who he was. Quintus Cephas has been injured the last couple years. He hasn't produced anything for the Detroit Lions. So it's not a concern there from the lack of talent. You look at the Lions wide receivers. They have a talented receivers. It's not, not a joke here. It's not. Amon Ross St. Brown is damn good. He is a number one wide receiver, in my opinion. Jamison Williams will develop into a number one wide receiver. He's six games he's going to miss. But... Guess what? There's 17 games in an NFL season. 11 he'll be in, plus if the Lions make the playoffs. And he'll develop. I'm not too worried about him. Okay, then you got Josh Reynolds, who and Jared Goff have a great connection. They do. Khalif Raymond that everybody forgets about, the most forgettable player for whatever reason, even though he produces at a high level during game day. I watch every game. I've seen him produced. Damn good receiver. Marvin Jones Jr. is a number five on this wide receiver core. 
And then you got Antoine Green, who we drafted in the seventh round. That is good, one through seven. Yes, DJ Chark left, but Marvin Jones Jr., I think, can produce the same type of results that he can. And then again, we barely had Jamison Williams last year play because of injury. So I'm not too concerned about that, about the lack of talent. I do believe it's I do believe that DeAndre Hopkins is extremely talented. I think he absolutely would make this wide receiver core better. There's no doubt about it. He's not a bum of a player. But would it really would it would it take it to a different level? I think it could, but is it that much? Is the offense going to be that much improved with DeAndre Hopkins? I think it would be improved, but how much improved? Because you got to understand, there's just so many balls to go around. They're going to run the football with David Montgomery. They're going to run it with Jameer Gibbs. They're going to pass it to the wideouts. There is a ton of playmakers and tight ends on this team. I'm not sure how much better the offense is going to improve. It would improve. I just don't know how much. And you're probably going to have to pay him, what, $15, $16 million a year. Would it be really worth it to pay him this type of money for just a little more production, potentially? I don't know there. When you could take that money and maybe trade for a player on the defense or acquire talent, you know, before the trade deadline for a defense that would make maybe the defense that much more improved. Because the offense is really good. It was really good last year. I think it's improved this year. How much more can it improve? But, I mean, he absolutely would be good. Shannon Sharp would say he, he, would, love, he would love for the Detroit Lions to get it. Absolutely. I mean, I, I understand that he's a name. I think Detroit seems the most logical spot for Shannon Sharp. It does seem like a, a logical spot, right? If you're trying to compete for a Super Bowl, you're always looking to bring in talent to the football team. So let me know in the comment section, would you bring in DeAndre Hopkins? Why for yes and N for no? A lot of people like it. You got, you got people all around the NFL that would like to see DeAndre Hopkins be a Detroit Lion. I'm just, I'm not sure it's going to make it that much better. Now, if we didn't have Marvin Jones Jr., I think that would be absolutely logical. There's no doubt about it. But if you do bring in Hopkins, then Green probably doesn't make the roster. I mean, and, and you don't see his development. And I do like to see developing young talent because that's what good, good teams do is they draft players and they develop them, and they become a talented player for the football team. That's what they do. Not necessarily just free agency and all of that. So I don't think they bring them in personally. If they did, I'm not going to complain at all. I do think the, it would be an upgrade, but I'm not going to complain at all if they don't. i really not going to, and I'm just being 100% honest with you. Also talking about Dan Campbell, rankings here, all Lions Nation, talking about... They rank Dan Campbell, third head coach, Detroit's third-year head coach at number 16 out of the NFL, out of 32. Now, I think last year he was 31 out of 32. I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> so he jumped, what, 15 spots in one year. I think we all laughed at him being ranked 31 out of 32, as we should have laughed at. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. People just get the idea, oh, He's a meathead because you talk about biting kneecaps. Clearly, they forget how, you know, players talk. And let's be honest here. We all, we're all not professional and rocket scientists like Matt Patricia and, and we, we speak perfectly. I don't really care about that. I, I said this before. When I was in the Army, I had a captain who was really smart, had degrees upon degrees. His IQ was high. But in the field, he was not good. Then you can have people like Dan Campbell who doesn't speak perfectly. He may not have the biggest, you know, brain in the world, but he gets the job done because people relate to him. It's just how you lead, lead by example, and he seems to be one of those guys that leads by example, and people love it. And he's a former player, and they respect it. So they rank him 16 out of 32. I think he's higher. I think he's a damn good coach. I really do. I love this guy. You know, 
I don't know how many, if you look at all the coaches in the NFL, could they took over this team after Matt Patricia and produce the way that Dan Campbell has produced? Could they have turned this ship around? Do you think that 15 more coach, coaches in the NFL right now could turn this ship around? I don't think so. I really don't because Detroit was a bad place all around. The culture was bad. We've been through coaches left and right, and it never changed. Dan Campbell comes in here, and he does. I think that speaks volumes to his ability to adapt and bring people together and his personality alone, I think he is not that bad. I, I, I would give him a top 10 ranking for coach, and it's not being a homer at all. He's What he's done in Detroit, and in in this is now year three, has been absolutely amazing. And I just don't believe 15 more coaches could do it the way that he did it. I absolutely just don't believe that's the case. And then we get in here talking about what is the difference, uh, you know, in 2023 team than the ones the past because you feel it feels different right like we all feel like this is going to be a good team and the answer here is youth and p uh, potential stardom I agree I think for me it is the draft that is absolutely different with this team compared to years past is we're able to draft players in not just round one we haven't really figured out round two as of yet, you know, a little bit. We'll, we'll see Joshua Pascal, and then obviously this year. But three, four, five, six, seven, and undrafted. We have gotten talent throughout the whole draft, and it's made this team young and good. And they're developing because you have the coaches that can develop the young talent. That is what's making this team, to me, much different than years past. As you've looked like 2011, I absolutely love that football team and 2014, but the main stars in those teams were the first round picks, right? You got Matthew Stafford, Javid Best, Calvin Johnson. You, We had Golden Tate at some point. These were high draft picks, but you weren't getting a lot of production out of the younger guys. This year, it's different, or, or, or sorry, not younger guys, but production out of draft picks that were later in the draft. Amon Ross St. Brown, Jerry Jacobs, Aleem McNeil. You just go go with Kirby Joseph, these players that are studs on this team that are in rounds, you know, three, four, five, six, and seven undrafted. It makes it a whole different and easy to rebuild and have quality depth. And the connection between Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes is uncanny right now. They have made a culture of fun and bringing that people want to come here. So that's what makes it different. You know, if we do get injured, on majority of the football team, I think we're okay. Except for quarterback right now, right? You lose your quarterback, you're in a world of hurt until Hendon Hooker is available. But other than that, offensive line, we have depth. Wide receivers, we have depth. Tight end, we have depth. Defensive line, we have depth. Linebacker, now we have a little bit more depth. Secondary, big time depth. So if you have injuries, it's not like, oh, the world is going to end for the Lions season like it used to be in years past. Calvin Johnson goes down, you're worried. Golden Tate goes down, you're worried. Javid Best goes down, run game is inept. Right? So it's different now because it's like, okay, well, guess what? If Amon Ra goes down, that does suck. But you do got Jimmy Gibbs. You do got Josh Reynolds, Khalif Raymond. We, we, we've seen it. We've seen what this team can do when you lose players and they still continue to roll because you have good depth there. So that's what, to me, it makes it difference about this football team. And it's, it's really nice to see for the Detroit Lions. And I think that's why they're absolutely going to be good. I think they're a good team because injuries are a big deal and they're get, they've made so much good depth for the last couple of years that, damn, you know, it's not that, it's not going to be, killer if one of these guys besides Jared Goff goes down and that's a really good feeling it's a really good feeling so I think that is the reason why and all of that but make sure you guys subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell like the video and we're going to keep this thing rolling all the way through this lull period and we're going to have fun when train camp hits and get ready folks because it's never ending it is never ending with that said folks adios